PV Electronics Corporation is an American company that designs, develops, manufactures and markets professional audio equipment. It is one of the largest audio equipment manufacturers in the world, headquartered in Meridian, Mississippi. History Hartley PV founded PV Electronics, one of the world's largest manufacturers and suppliers of musical and professional audio equipment, in 1965, having built his first amplifier in 1957. Since its foundation, PV Electronics has been privately owned, and has grown from their humble beginnings in Hartley's basement in the 1950s. In 2011, Inc. magazine profiled the global success story of music and audio innovator Hartley PV and PV Electronics Corporation. Hartley PV dreamed of becoming a rock star, wrote Inc.'s Casey Wareham. Though he lacked the chops to become the next Chuck Berry, his name has been etched into the pantheon of rock and roll history. Topic. Company information PV currently owns 1.5 million square feet square meters of manufacturing, assembly area over 33 facilities across North America, Europe and Asia, 18 of which are located in their home state of Mississippi. Products are manufactured mainly in China and the United States, and are distributed to 136 different countries. They also hold 130 patents, and have a product range of around 2,000 designs, with between 80 and 100 added each year. In 2014, PV closed its UK distribution and manufacturing operations, citing that while the UK facility was originally a manufacturing plant, the lower cost and advanced techniques of Chinese manufacturing deemed it unsustainable. PV Electronics also owns eight major electronics brands Media Matrix, Architectural Acoustics, PVDJ, Crest Audio, Composite Acoustic, Sanctuary Series, Budder Amplification, and Trace. Elliot. Topic Products Although PV Electronics produces a wide variety of equipment, a few designs stand out through their popularity or use by prominent professionals. Topic 5150, 6505, 6534 Plus Series Guitar Amplifiers These amplifiers collectively the 5150 series and speaker cabinets were the result of a collaboration with Eddie Van Halen. The 5150 series was preceded by the VTM60, VTM120 amps, among the first non-hot-rodded amps. The 5150 has gained popularity with modern hard rock, hardcore punk and metal bands and guitarists due to its large amount of distortion. Jerry Cantrell of Alice in Chains uses this amplifier. While touring with Van Halen, Cantrell asked Eddie Van Halen, If I could buy one off him at the end of the tour with him, and when I got home there were three full stacks and two guitars waiting for me. In 2004, PV and Eddie Van Halen parted ways, with Eddie taking the 5150 brand name with him. This resulted in the renaming of the amplifier as the PV6505, with slightly updated styling but original circuitry. The 5152, which contains an extra preamp tube for more headroom and gain on the rhythm channel, is the old equivalent to the new 6505 Plus. In 2010, PV released a new amplifier for the 6505 line, the 6534 Plus. 
It is much like the 6505 Plus, but the 6534 has EL34 power tubes instead of the 6L6 power tubes on the standard 6505 amplifiers. Topic: <laughs> Bandit series guitar amplifiers. The Bandit Amp series are solid-state combo guitar amplifiers. The Bandit amplifiers were introduced in 1980 and remain in production today 2013. The earliest model Bandits had a power rating of 50 watts RMS into an 8-ohm speaker. The power rating has gradually increased over time, and current model Bandits are rated at 80 watts RMS into 8 ohms, and 100 watts RMS into 4 ohms. In the mid-1990s, the Bandit was used to introduce PV's proprietary transtube circuitry, a solid-state technology aimed at emulating the sound of tube amplifiers. Bandit models Bandit 1980 Solo series Bandit 1981 to 1983 Solo series Bandit 65 1983 to 1986 Solo series Bandit 75 1987-1988 Solo series Bandit 112 1988 to 1995 Transtube series Bandit 112 1996 to 1999 Transtube series 112 made in US 2000 to 2004 Transtube series 2 Bandit 112 made in China 2004 to 2006 PV Bandit with Transtube technology made in China 2006 present. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Classic series guitar amplifiers. PV's line of guitar amplifiers made specifically for blues, jazz, and classic rock players. The original Classic Series amplifiers were introduced in the 1970s and were originally called the PV Vintage Series which the first releases used 6C10 tubes in the preamp, not solid state. 6C10 amps have a presence knob not a master. Equals Vintage Series change to a solid state preamp and a master volume, which is the easy way to tell if the amp has 6C10 preamp or not without removing the back panel to access the chassis, the solid state preamps and 6L6GC power tubes. The original 2 to 12 vintage is 100 watts, whereas the 6 to 10 and the 1 to 15 are only 50 watts. The original classic was a 50 watt amp and two 12 inch speakers and a spring reverb, with two preamps for clean and distortion channels. They could be used separately, or by plugging the instrument into the parallel connection, which fed both preamps, allowing selection of one from the other using a foot switch. The instrument could also be plugged into the series connection, running first through the clean channel and feeding that into the distortion channel, providing a means of overdriving the distortion preamp, creating a much more versatile method of producing distortion. The current line of classic series amplifiers consist of three variations of the classic model, the classic 30112, classic 50212 and 410. There are two variations of the Delta Blues model, the Delta Blues 115 and the Delta Blues 210. They use 12AX7 preamp tubes, EL84 power tubes, and have spring reverb tanks. From 1994 to 1997, a 15 watts amp with a 10 inches speaker was also produced, the PV Classic 20. <laughs> Topic: CS series power amplifiers. Equals 
The CS series amplifiers mainly the CS800 are some of the most used amplifiers in the world, and among PV's best-selling products. JSX series guitar amplifiers the JSX series was designed for recording artist Joe Satriani. Satriani was looking for an amplifier that was customized to his style, that had every feature he required, and would work in both live and studio applications. This amplifier was reissued as the PVXXX2 when Joe Satriani's endorsement ended, since the original XXX platform was used as starting point for the design of the JSX series. Equals. Topic: Radial Pro series of drum kits. Equals. The Radial Pro series were PV's high-end drum line. In production from 1994 until 2002, it consisted of the RBS-1 prototypes, Radial Pro 1000, 750 750 firsts, and 500 and 500 firsts models. The flagship 1000 model consisted of a radial bridge that took all the mounting stresses, and a three-ply thin maple shell to enhance the resonance. The 750-751st series had composite bridges and stained four-ply thin maple shells. The 500-501st series had composite bridges and wrapped five-ply North American thin hickory shells. Equals. Topic: Triple X 3120 series guitar amplifiers. Equals The basis for the JSX series, the XXX series provides a tonal range from what some call glassy cleans to full body high gain tones using its three channel interface. The 3120 series came later. Originally, the PVXXX was set to become recording artist George Lynch's signature model, but the deal never finalized. Equals. Topic: Valve King series guitar amplifiers. Equals. All tube high gain amplifiers, capable of anything from blues to metal. Equals. Topic: Viper series guitar amplifiers. Equals. The Viper series of amps are modeling amplifiers. They generate different amplifier sounds based on digital models of various popular amplifiers. The models include Fender Twin and Deluxe, Mesa, Boogie Rectifier, Diesel Boutique, Crank Crankenstein, Vox AC30, and a large collection of PV amps like the 6505, XXX, and JSX. In addition to these amp models, these amps feature 11 editable preamp effects, all but Viper 15, 11 editable rack effects, onboard looper, Viper 30, 60, 75, 100, 120, MIDI input, Viper 30, 60, 75, 100, 120, and USB 2.0 connectivity, Viper 60, 75, 100, 120. The battery-powered Nano Viper was introduced in 2012 as a competitor against other small portable modeling amps like the Roland Micro Cube and Fender Mini Mustang. The Viper 60 and Viper 120 amps as well as the Viper 120 head feature 12AX7 and 6L6GC tubes. In 2013, an enhanced line of Viper amps was released. Called the Viper VIP series, short for Variable Instrument Input, 
The VIP-1, VIP-2, and VIP-3 retain all the programmed models of the original Vipires, but also possess the ability to serve as acoustic guitar amps, as well as bass guitar amps. They are also programmable by way of computer software link. Equals. Topic: TNT series bass amplifiers. Equals. The TNT series bass amplifier first entered the market in the late 1970s as a 45 watt combo with one 15 inch speaker. The high-power TNT bass amplifier series was introduced as a 150-200 watt bass combo primarily equipped with a Scorpion or Black Widow 15-inch woofer. The TNT series was recently updated to 600 watts, under the title PV Tour TNT 115. It is currently the most powerful bass combo sold by PV. Topic 400BH series bass amplifiers. Equals the 400BH power amp module was used in a range of bass amps during the early 1980s, commencing with the MKIII bass head in 1979. The MKIV bass amp head unit, introduced in 1981, offers a range of functions. It is air-cooled, features protection circuitry, and is capable of around 300 and 350 of a watt RMS safely into 2 ohms. The 2 ohm load rating is very stable this amp actually operates at less than 2 ohms, enabling the use of multiple mix and match speaker systems to improve acoustic efficiency and sound stage options. In contrast, typical modern musical instrument amps are limited to 4 ohms speaker systems. Circuit board layout is conservative, easy to access, repair or modify. Dynamics and reliability are excellent. Its only weak point is that the preamp and power amp modules are installed in the chipboard cabinet with lack of electromagnetic shielding, resulting in a need to physically separate the amp head from bass pickups and speakers. That can be easily fixed by installing earthed aluminium foil or sheet inside the cabinet. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Windsor series guitar amplifiers. Introduced as a low-cost clone of the vaunted Marshall JCM 800 2203 Master Volume. The internal design is essentially identical to the vintage Marshall, with the exception of using a plate-fed tone stack instead of the Marshall trademarked cathode follower-based circuitry. Topic: <laughs> Wolfgang and HP2 series electric guitars. These were a result of a collaboration with Eddie Van Halen to produce his ideal guitar. The design was relatively successful, but did not gain the reputation or popularity of similarly priced guitars such as the Fender Stratocaster or the Gibson Les Paul. The PV Wolfgang was discontinued in 2004. PV reintroduced the Wolfgang as the HP2 during the 2017 Summer NAM show. The VT series was also popular in the late 1970s to early 1980s. Gary Rossington from Skinnerd played the Mace VT. There was the Deuce VT, the Mace's litter brother, and a classic VT. The Mace and Deuce were the same amp, but the Mace had six 6L6GC output tubes and the other only four. Hence the Mace was 160 watts and the Deuce 120 watts. Topic: Controversy. In February 2015, the company was featured on an episode of the CBS television show, Undercover Boss. Chief Operating Officer Cortland Gray made visits to a company store and manufacturing plant in disguise, with the founder communicating to him through a hidden earpiece. 
Before the episode aired, the creator of Undercover Boss issued an unprecedented statement indicating something unfortunate happened after filming. PV Electronics, citing global competitive pressures, partially closed down the same plant featured in the episode. The employees at the manufacturing plant featured in the episode felt betrayed by the move. The company said these moves were necessary to remain competitive against rivals who were already manufacturing in lower cost locations. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Legal cases. In 2009, PV Electronics Corp. filed two lawsuits against various companies under Behringer, Music Group Umbrella for patent infringement, federal and common law trademark infringement, false designation of origin, trademark dilution, and unfair competition. In 2011, the Music Group filed suit in the U.S. District Court against PV Electronics Corp. for false advertising, false patent marking and unfair competition. In making these allegations, the music group cites an ongoing investigation of its own initiation that has assessed PV products with regard to U.S. patent laws and FCC regulations. In April 2014, PV Electronics Corporation was fined $225,000 by the FCC for violating the digital device laws by not notating required labeling and marketing statements in their owner manuals. <laughs> 